Boston Medical Center was formed uh, as a merger of two hospitals back in 1996, uh, Boston University Hospital um, and uh, also the Boston City Hospital. Boston Medical Center uh, is the largest safety net hospital in New England. And uh, under health care reform, it's been impacted uh, significantly uh, by the cost pressures that health care reform are putting, is putting on the marketplace. Essentially, we have the two previously existing hospitals that are uh, separated by a city block but still operate today uh, under one license, though, and as one entity. That setup re uh, creates a lot of inefficiency, uh, both operationally as well as from an energy perspective. Back in 2011, Bob asked me to audit the entire Harrison campus of Boston Medical Center to develop energy conservation measures that would reduce their operating costs but also improve aging infrastructure. Through auditing the building we realized that this building had eight 50,000 CFM air handling units with a total air handling capacity of 400,000 CFM for 200,000 square foot and that's two CFM a square foot for a building of that type is way in excess of what would be needed. They have a building that has all this installed horsepower, but they couldn't deliver it to the occupants of the building. And BMC had a future plans for this building. This building is going to be around for a long time. So we developed a plan that would install a brand new return air duct system within the building and would allow us to convert the existing high velocity return air duct system into supply air. So in essence, doubling the size of the supply air duct systems in the building. Some of the issues and challenges we had was uh, running the, the duct down the outside of the building and into the side of the building. And that, the, the the benefit of having an interstitial space where you have a large ceiling space, a void between floors, is that you could cut the holes in those areas during working hours. One of the major challenges that we were faced with was once the design was finalized, how are we going to get this material up there? How are we going to build the biggest ring duct in the city of Boston on top of a six-story building? And it was a lot of collaboration between all the entities as well as the city, the state um, scheduling to shut down lanes of traffic on Mass Ave, park a crane in the middle of it, and put the ductwork up there. Right now we're in Yaki two and a half. This is the second floor interstitial space. So one thing that you'll notice is the truss system. So on the lower floors, the first floor and mezzanine, uh, first floor and mezzanine, they're on one side of Mass Ave. The second floor effectively extends across Mass Ave to the south block of Yaki. So this is a bridge, basically. So this is an example of the truss system that goes along the exterior wall. So we wanted to size this duct for low velocity, 1,000 feet per minute, and what we were limited with is this existing truss system right here. So our contractors had to work together with us to make the wall penetration, as you can see right there, and then we've actually come around the existing structural steel. This duct right here, this was existing perimeter air that we had to relocate. So you could see that the duct was cut at the bottom and refed with the round duct right there. this project allows us uh, to, to make the consolidation work, uh, but it'll also provide the opportunity to create a much more energy efficient building going forward. Uh, you know, the investment allows for almost a million dollars a year in energy savings uh, for the organization, so uh, it really uh, allowed us to pursue our strategy on a number of different fronts. Uh, uh, you know, really I think uh, NSTAR's partnership in helping us work through those numbers and providing uh, rebates uh, to make the project more cost-effective 
was really critical in our ability to be able to move forward as an organization and to be able to sell it uh, to our board.